Welcome everybody to Extreme Off-Road Silly Builds and today we're dealing with the 1962 POP50 and this has 292 horsepower, 171 pounds-feet of torque from a 1.3 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine and it is the lightest vehicle that we've had on this series by some considerable margin at 505 pounds and yeah, 0 to 60 is only dealt with in 4.467 seconds not to 109.967 seconds and it will only go to a top speed of around 118 miles an hour but I've got it up to a little bit faster than that on the open road so uh, yeah not expecting much from this to be honest because yeah nearly 300 horsepower is something that is a small short wheelbase car like this that weighs barely half barely, barely 500 pounds isn't really asking a lot quite frankly and you can see by these stats that it's not all that great Launch and acceleration is good, but off-road capability is low. Braking and handling are poor. Top speed is quite poor as well. And uh, yeah, those tiny ass wheels are really not going to be able to do all that much. So uh, yeah, this got released in the previous season alongside the Peel Trident, which we'll try out in another episode. Because uh, even though they do have the same horsepower and torque from the same engine that's been swapped in, and is a little bit heavier but it is also a better balance as well so maybe that'll be better than this but yeah I'm not expecting this to be quick at all it's undoubtedly going to be the slowest that we've had on this series so far who knows maybe I'm just being a little bit of a pessimist about it but this has never done well on previous uh, games that we've had it on oh besides because of that kind of thing it likes to fall over this is not a surprise given it's only got one wheel at the back and even then the wheels themselves are absolutely tiny they weren't even meant for going more than 50 miles an hour and yet we're getting to more than 100 so uh, yeah still it's been better controlled than I expected so far but it is undoubtedly going to fall over at some point I have no doubt about that. See, we can get it up to more than 118. Don't know why when tuning it, it was only saying 118 miles an hour, but I can only go off what I can uh, read on the stats. Either way, even 130 is not quick enough, really. You consider that you can get up to way more than that with certain cars. of oversteer there. Well, this is surprisingly being rather well behaved. I was expecting worse from it to be honest. Granted it's not all that quick but I was expecting us to be falling over, you know, falling off the cliff, all sorts and yet it's not been like that yet. But I've still got plenty of time to do that. Oh and yeah, this does have all wheel drive off or tires off or suspension, I've got to say, but yeah, not like not like it really is helping all that much I down. This is not the slowest car that we've had, I'd be massively surprised. I'm only saying that because it's been a lot more sedate than I expected it to be. Yeah, we are definitely going to be the slowest, it's already nearly up to three minutes. We're not close to the end yet. We've not had to use a rewind yet have had to do for, you know, four-wheel drive cars and more normal kind of vehicles. I've been drifting. What is this thing? 
near as bad as it was in the previous game. And I'd have expected to have fallen over at least once by now, but we haven't. Well, we're well, definitely the slowest car that we've had on this series so far, but quite frankly, I was expecting it to be a lot worse. So, yeah, 4 minutes 12.644. Puts us, oh, about 30-ish seconds slower than the Renault 4 L export, which was originally the uh, slowest car that we had. And um, with the Renault 8 Gordini not that far behind. So, uh, yeah, but even though it is the slowest car that we've had so far in this series, I was expecting it to be a lot more difficult to drive, and it really wasn't. It only really got up onto, like, one or two wheels once or twice. And, yeah, even then managed to get it back under control quite quickly so uh, yeah despite being the slowest it's not the most difficult car that we've ever had to drive on any extreme off-road silly build series and yeah in comparison to the previous game this was a uh, yeah definitely a lot more controllable not sure why maybe there's less elevation changes on this than in that previous game or in terms of the route that we chose maybe the surfaces are a little bit more forgiving I'm not sure but yeah either way that on that game it did fall over I think at least twice whereas here it didn't fall over once but yeah still the slowest that we've had but it'd be interesting to see what the Peel Trident can do in comparison to this because like I said it is heavier by 85 pounds but maybe that extra weight will make it more controllable less controllable we'll have to see in uh, when we use it I'm not sure if I'm going to use it in the next episode but we will eventually see it at some point but nonetheless thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.